This section um, of videos, more functions, will cover the sumif and the countif, two really useful uh, functions in everyday use. But there's also much, much more. So there's some um, areas that it might be useful to you and, and all statements and uh, some ranking and some other little bits and pieces. Okay. <clears throat> so you can see across the bottom, I'm just going to bring this down a bit. We've got the and, or, and not. Um, this is part of the new um, three syllabus. We've got the summit that's been there for some time now, the round, count if, count blank, and rank.eq. So we're going to run through these um, together and have a look and see what they're expecting from us. So we look at this one and we look at the and. You can see that if you read over here, just bring that over a little bit. <clears throat> so if the age is less than 50 and the absence is equal to zero, then you get a true statement. So this is like a, a cut down version of a nested if with an and or an or, which we will be doing later. So instead of coming back with a criteria as a true or false, it just comes back with a statement true or false. So you can see that one is pretty straightforward. You do the first one and then you autofill it. If we look at it in a insert function, it's just like that. So you put in an and, you've got your logical argument there and your logical argument there. And then you'll get your first result. So very easy to use. The all works very much the same way in its method, its sequence. But obviously, if it meets one criteria or the other, then you would get, as it says here, a true statement. OK. The one that's the trickiest is the not. So if we just have a little look at this one, I'm just going to come down. So the example is add a not function in I2 that will display the text true or the statement true if absence is not equal to zero otherwise false the test may say in this language it might say things like use a true or false statement to show something where criteria is not met so there's different ways of them using this so whatever you use when it comes to your not here it's a double negative so you will be getting the the false, if you like, if it meets it. So if we have a look at this one, that's met it, so we get a false. This one hasn't met it, so we get a true. It's almost like the opposite of what you would be expecting if the not wasn't there. So if, if we had a an F2 equals zero on the first one, you would expect a true, but you just switch it around and make it a negative. So have a little play with that, have a little think about it. And there's different criteria they could ask you to use in there. But other than that, it's quite straightforward. You keep your head and think about it as a double negative. OK, I'm going to move on to the sum if the next one in the syllabus list. Um, I've done an example here. I'll show you it that way and then I'll show you it in the insert function way as well. So there's the conditions we're meeting. <clears throat> so the range is the E6 to the E14, so that's our range. And the criteria is to be less than 500. So these are quite easy to type in. So if I delete this, we're following this, so don't worry, you're, you've got it there. Okay. Delete. OK, so we do our equal sum if, there it is there, double click on it. We're picking up the range. The exam test question would tell us the range that we're looking at. And we're looking for criteria. So we're putting a comma. I'm going to use speech marks because I'm using a less than. And a less, less than is counted as character, text or letter. OK, it's not data, it's not a number. Then your 500 speech mark again and close the bracket. 
tick the little box and then what you've done is you've added up everything that is less than 500. Let's delete it again and do it do it a different way using the uh, insert place function. So I'm going to put my function in first. I know it's a sum up this information if it meets a certain criteria. Go into my FX. I'm just going to bring that there so you can see it. So the range is this. And the criteria is less than 500. Notice that I don't have to put the speech mark. So if I'm a little bit nervous in the exam or I just want to make things as easy as, as possible for myself, I don't need to use that. If I click away, you can see that it automatically does the speech marks for me and I still get it correct. If we look at the next one down, this one in um, E20, this one's saying that we want to add up the amount for a company, for the company Smith & Co only. So if I double click on that, you can see the format of it. We've got a little bit more going on than just criteria. So let's have a look at it in the insert paste function. We have the range that it's looking at. That's where that criteria is. That's where Smith & Co is. We're looking at the one from that range that we're concentrating on, which is Smith & Co. So we just clicked on there. And then we've got the range we're adding up, the Smith & Co only which is this. Okay, so let's have a go. So it's E60, E40. Let's do it together. I'm going to delete that out. So let's do it with the paste insert function first. So equal sum if again. So I'm summing up something that meets a criteria. Into our, I'll pop it at the top and then you can see this down here. So we have our range where our Smith & Co is. We have our Smith & Co, that's an example cell if you like of, what, of who it is. I've typed it in, I've used the cell reference. And then the sum range according to that criteria is in here. So it's only going to add up the green if you like within that area. And we've already got a comeback example of an answer. Okay, and then it's done. If you were asked to do E23 here, and you were asked to add up the totals for all companies except J. Jones in E23, it gets a little bit trickier. If I click there, you can see that there's a help along the way. So before we do it, have a look at the way that we've used the chevrons opposite each other. This happens quite a lot in um, using this syntax to represent not. So let's have a look at how we put that in. So we need to put in the if, for some if, double click. We need to use the range where that is, remember, like we did last time. So it's in there, come down. We have a comma, a speech mark because the chevrons are considered letters, character, text, etc. The J Jones, exactly as it is with a space between the J and the Jones, but not after the syntax. Speech mark it again, comma, and we're adding up the totals. So we're actually adding up this range here and closing it off. And there we have. And what I've done here is I've just added it up just to see <clears throat> what it would add up without that. So I've done a sum, basic sum minus a G8. So if you had a vast amount of data, this is a really good way of uh, doing it quickly. Let's delete that. <clears throat> this time, let's do it with the insert function. So we've got the sum if again, up to our fx. Okay, our range is where the Smith and Jones is going to be, but obviously not using the company heading. Our criteria 
is the not J space Jones. And when I sum, when I click away from it, the speech marks automatically appear. And then the sum we're, range we're adding up is the G6 to the G14. And we've already got the same result. So whichever way you want to use is absolutely fine in the exam. So keep your head, think about what range are we looking at, what's the criteria within that range, or just the criteria. As we did in the first one, we had less than 500, and then add up the range they're talking about. Okay, I'm going to move on to the round now. Right, first thing is we don't use a round in the exam. When it talks to you with regard to questions, it will always say round up the following da 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 or range or instance um, or round down the, the insta first instance or the range. It will never say round. Okay, so don't use a round. I've done some examples here um, where I've done a, a round, if you like, on the G6. So you can see how the round down brings it down to the nearest uh, 10. So the 10 there, not the decimalization. And this one rounds it up. So that one goes to 536 and that one goes down to 535. Uh, and that will work all the way along. It doesn't affect the decimalization. It doesn't take the decimal places off. And that's what people think round does. So it's gone down to the nearest pound, the nearest 10. This one, you can see that it sort of makes a difference when you use a round. It's affecting the decimalization. This one is not decimal places. So what we're looking for is something that just is quite simple. You pop in the, let's just delete it. So you would pop in the round down, if that's what it is, type in round, double click on the round down, click on the cell it, it's referring to. And then what it's asking is by how many digits? Do you want to round it to a zero, round it to a one, round it to a two. So if we did it as a one and close the brackets and entered, we round down one, makes no difference. I'll take that to the next one. You can see it has made a difference because that's already got the one, the eight, that's got a five now, and that's got a three. So it's going down to that digit. We put in a zero, then it's going down to the nearest pound. It's staying there. See the difference? We put a two in. It will stay exactly the same. So it's pretty straightforward to use. If we use it in the FX, it's just that. It's just what are we rounding and rounding by what? And if you click in these, you can see what it's actually doing. Okay, so the nearest integer, zeros, point, or admitted to the nearest integer. Okay, so that's quite straightforward. The next one too can be quite straightforward, but it could also be a little bit tricky. So in the first instances here, we have a count if. Most of us have used a count if, if not, well, this is where we're going to start. So we're counting data within a cell that meets a criteria, not adding it up, counting it. Okay, so hence we get four. So it's less than 500. If I change the criteria to more than 500 and entered it in, well, that's weird, get the same amount. Let's do more than nine. Then it's slightly different. Okay, so you can see that it's counting um, data cells that meet that less than 500. Let's do it together. So we're going in equals count if. You can see how you can make spelling mistakes quite easily. You're picking up the range, 
where you're going to count. And then you've got to speech mark, remember, if you're going to type it in yourself. So that less than 500 is accepted. If we were going to do that in an FX, we'd start the function. Let's say we weren't sure. Let's not start the function. Let's go into FX. I'm really not sure about what this is getting at. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, type in count and go. So I've got a count, I've got a count A and I've got a count if. So count just counts the number of range. That's the, if it's mixed uh, with uh, data and um, text. And this is one we need. So we've got it now. So sometimes using this is just a bit of a help to find your way, but you have to be really careful with those key words that I used at the beginning because it doesn't always bring things up. So you have to know a little bit. So the range we can pop in there. And the criteria we could do the less than 500 and it will speech mark it for us and we'll get the right result you can see that it's done that for you so speech marks and commas and all those things don't need to be um, properly adhered to if you're in a fx it will help you but if you're not you will need to make sure they're very tight so on this one let's do it together so count here Let's do the FX, nice and easy. We've got our range. We've got our criteria, which is uh, greater than 900. Okay, and it's done. This one, however, this one's asking you to count the range here, J6, J14, the cells that have no order. When I ask this in class, um, most students will find, they use their initiative, they find a way, and I'll do all sorts of things um, to find out what it is. One of the examples would be account blank. But if it was account blank and I came in and I put something like no order, that count blank wouldn't work. So what you need to do, you need to use your initiative, and this is particularly something that you need to think about in the exam. So let's see how we could do it. So we've got our count if. We can do it in the FX. So we're trying to think, there's our range. What could we put in here that counts those blank spaces, but if I came along, and I change things, would it still count them? So what we could use is we could be quite clever and we could use a not order. So count any other cell that doesn't have that word order in it. And then if we okay, we get five. And then if I come in and do something there, we still get five. But if I delete an order, it changes. So think about that um, with regard, if you're going to type it in, the same as before, count if, range, speak, comma, speech mark, there's your chevrons back and forward, order, which is the text, oops, spell it properly, important, speech mark it again, and close it off, and there you have it. Okay, so just be really aware of that little step up on the count here. Count blanks, really straightforward. I don't even know if they come up in the exam, but they definitely are in the syllabus, but they're very straightforward. And there's no tricks up the sleeves with that one. It's just it's the same. Okay, so rank.eq is the final one in this um, uh, workbook. And the reason we use dot eq is simply because it's the new version since new version since uh, 2010, MS 2010. We've had to change to .eq rank. It's not acceptable anymore. It's, no, it's not used. Okay, so that's the only reason. So we've got an example here where I've done something already, and I've used a .eq, and it's asking me, as it says here, what rank 
is 156 or A6, it's the reference, in A6 to A14 descending. Okay, so where does 156 rank in a descending order in that range? That's what it's getting at. Now I've done that, I've done the rank EQ, I've done the first instance, A6, I've done the range A6 to A14, and I've done the order which is descending. However, when I autofill, I get these green arrows. So I'm thinking something's not right there. So if I double click on one of those, do you see how the range is moving down? So as I've autofilled down, so has that range. So guess what? We need to absolute, don't we? So a range that we're sticking to in a rank needs the F4 applying to it and it needs to be absoluted and then it will work correctly. Right, first of all, before we change things over here to make see how it copes, we're going to delete this and we're going to do it from scratch. So we know we've got to think about absolution. If we forget, we can do what we did. We can go back in and do it again. So let's do it, typing it in. So rank.eq, if I hop on the other one, there we go. We're going to click on the first instance, A6, comma. We're clicking on the range, Oops. that's it, where it sits. We're going to F4 it, comma. And notice how this little help comes up here, descending or ascending. So double click on the zero. Close it off and enter. And because we've done the absolute, no green arrows. And it works beautifully because that's all in a sequence just so that we can see that it works beautifully. Let's do it the other way. So equal rank. Or let's even see if we can find a rank. Over here, let's type in a, we know it's a rank of some sort. Go. And that's the dot eq returns the rank number of list of numbers size relative to its mother value has the same rank top rank mm. that sounds like ours it could have a look at the other ones though and um, if more than one value has the same rank the average rank no we're not looking for that we're looking for just a straightforward rank number to come back okay so let's use that one so we know we're in the right one we have our first instance a6. The ref is the reference to the range it sits within. We're going to F4 it while it's in there. And then if we click in here, it will once again help us to put the right order in. Okay? And double click. And the beauty of it is, is that if I change these to um, 200, the rank will change. 